Kovalchuk is Chief Investment Strategist at CFC Seymour Limited. And he joins us now from Hong Kong. Derek, great to see you this morning. I, I, I guess morning. the big question here really is, you know, does this signal the end of the bear market that we've been seeing, you know, in, in China in recent months? I'm pretty sure that it does, that in fact the lows uh, of two days ago when intraday the index moved below 3,000 will in the future be looked back upon as the bottom and a time when uh, the next leg of a rally has begun. And the main reason here is that the government in China still has so much potential influence on what's happening with the stock index and clearly they sent a message that they do not want further declines, that they would like the market to rebound and, and this is definitely uh, cheering investors. Right, so Derek, really it's that signal from Beijing, you know, that it's going to do something and, and do you think it's going to continue to do something to, to keep the market uh, afloat? Uh, particularly ahead of the Beijing Olympics? I think it's an important consideration for Chinese policymakers to, not to have Olympics at a time uh, of stock markets declining and the population possibly uh, complaining about that. So definitely the government will want the, the recovery in the market to last through the summer. Mm. I don't think that they will announce any new measures anytime soon because okay. today's reaction is, is very optimistic already. Right. Uh, and, and as far as the impact is concerned, this is going to be a long-term impact? Do you think it's going to last uh, long enough uh, to the, the end of the year, perhaps? Uh, usually the shorter impact of changes in the stamp duty is the most dramatic. Uh, I think that um, what happened today will help us uh, in the medium term, but other considerations will take the Chinese indices higher uh, as, as the year progresses, for instance, the decline in inflation and the pretty imminent end of the monetary tightening measures. Mm. And our forecast is for the index for Shanghai Composite to end the year at 4,500. 4,500. Derek, you know, you, you brought up inflation, you brought up growth. Uh, you know, s some, some reports have suggested that this move is actually uh, you know, a step backwards in terms of, uh, you know, it, well, it's a short-term gain that we're seeing in the markets right now, but in fact compromises Beijing's position in terms of what it can do for inflation, what it can do in terms of its uh, broader economic policies. Uh, do you agree? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think that um, Beijing has many other, other measures to manage macroeconomic growth, both administrative and in terms of monetary and fiscal policy. What they have done right now um, is simply uh, aimed at restoring confidence about, among stock market investors. You know, Beijing wants uh, GDP growth to be driven uh, by consumption to a larger degree. And mm -hmm. if uh, investors have lost too much, then maybe they will not consume as much as the government would, would want if they lost too much in the stock market. So this will avert that risk. All right, let me ask you a little bit about valuations now. The Shanghai Composite, uh, you know, way off its highs hit October. Uh, still commands a bit of a premium compared to uh, VH shares. Uh, I mean, how are they looking to you? I mean, do they look attractive at all right now? In terms of valuations, uh, the Shanghai market is definitely the most expensive in Asia right now, trading at forward-looking P-E ratio of 20 compared to 14.5 for Asia-Pacific. Asia so it is not cheap. But remember that the same argument that held last year is still valid, that the market um, is benefited by the fact that local investors do not have the freedom to uh, invest abroad. So there is a um, mm. sort of captive demand here, and this, in my mind, makes the market attractive at these levels. Right. Let me ask you, uh, you know, the other, the other factor which has been raised as well by some analysts is the appreciation of the yen uh, and China's capital controls. They're saying that these factors, given uh, the fact that the yen will continue to appreciate, uh, justifies this premium as well. I mean, what, can I get your thoughts on this? You mean the yuan, right? That's well, right. Um, from the, uh, from the perspective of foreign investors, obviously uh, the outlook for continued appreciation of the Chinese currency makes investments in, in, in the Shanghai market additionally attractive because you will not only gain from the stock index rally but also from the uh, currency gains. Uh, from the local investors' perspective, I don't really buy the argument because China is big on exports and margins of exporters will suffer as the yuan appreciates. So, so I don't think that this is a major factor here. All right, Derek, you know, let's just uh, cross over to what's happening in Hong Kong as well. We, we're seeing a bit of a pickup for the Hang Seng Index. You know, what sort of an effect is this going to have? Is this going to have a lasting effect, particularly, you know, for, for the situation in Hong Kong? I believe in, it will because um, half uh, of the uh, shares here in, in, the, in Hong Kong uh, are mainland companies and in terms of market capitalization. And as uh, the A shares rally, there must be some impact of, 
on valuations of age shares, and, and the Hang Seng Index will benefit from that. Because we believe that the Shanghai market will go sh sharply up over the course of the year, we are also bullying on the Hang Seng, and we expect it to end the year at 27,500. And Derek, you know, any sector which looks particularly attractive right now, you know, given the fact that, you know, valuations have come down a little bit? Um, I think that um, the banking sector might uh, look quite attractive, given the fact that we do not expect uh, much further monetary policy tightening. And uh, it seems also that uh, growth slowdown will not be that dramatic. In fact, the next quarter may be even better than the first quarter. So a lot of the bad news is already priced in and, right. and the banking sector should benefit. Okay, Derek, don't go away. We'll come back and talk to you some more, uh, in particular about the banking sector in, in China as well as uh, the region. Derek Kowalczyk, Chief Investment Strategist at uh, CFC Seymour Limited, will stay with us.